Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Gauri Pantavaidya. I am a professor and head of department of head and neck cancer surgery at the Tata Memorial Hospital in uh, Parel, Mumbai. So uh, at the outset, I wanted to congratulate JASCAP for uh, bringing out certain uh, videos for information to patients with head and neck cancers. Um, this is being done in collaboration with Tata Memorial Hospital. Now, um, head and neck cancers are a very common cancer in our country. Uh, these are commonly caused because of chewing tobacco, which is a rampant habit in our country. Um, when you get head and neck cancers, as you can imagine, these affect uh, very important parts and functions of your body uh, like the oral cavity, your mouth, your voice box, your breathing and swallowing passages, even parts of your skin, your jawbone. Now what happens when you have uh, head and neck cancers is that um, uh, the treatment of these cancers generally revolves around uh, three modalities of treatment, uh, either surgery, radiotherapy or chemotherapy in which surgery and radiotherapy can be used um, as single modality therapies or they are combined together and chemotherapy is also added depending on what stage you are diagnosed in. So um, after your treatment, uh, you need to go through intensive rehabilitation both mentally and physically because many of these treatments like surgery, radiation, chemotherapy, all of them have um, one, they can be disfiguring they may have issues with simple functions like swallowing, drinking and you may not be able to speak and therefore you need to undergo a lot of rehabilitative services. So um, what JustCap has done is uh, make separate modules to give you a little bit information about this journey of yours um, with regard to surgery, radiotherapy, chemotherapy and also a little bit about the rehabilitative services. We hope these videos will help you to go through this journey of treatment of cancer that you have been diagnosed with. Today I will be speaking on a little bit about the modality of surgery in the management of head and neck cancers. Now you have been diagnosed with head and neck cancers and uh, surgery forms the most important modality and it is the most commonly used modality for treatment of these cancers. When we talk about surgery for head and neck cancers and let me talk about oral cancer which is among the commonest cancers that affects the Indian population. When we talk about surgery for the cancer, it actually involves three parts. One is a resection of the primary tumour that is where your cancer is growing. Two is if required removal of the lymph nodes which are present in the neck which may be the draining basin for these cancers and three is depending upon your stage and depending upon what all we have removed during surgery you may require some form of reconstruction to help you get back as many functions as possible for the parts that have been removed. Now typically what happens is once you are diagnosed with head and neck cancers, most of y'all will undergo certain imaging uh, modalities like a CT scan or an MRI or a PET CT scan and with this we determine two things. One is your stage and two is what is the extent of spread of the cancer within your head and neck region. Now, when we look at these scans, we then decide which portions uh, affected by your tumour need to be removed. The general principle is, of course, you have to remove your tumour, but you also require to remove around 1 to 1.5 centimetres of normal tissue around the tumour, which is what we call margins. Now, while we have to do these things like removal of the tumour, trying to take margins, this may end up in removing um, certain sections of important structures of your head and neck region like a part of your tongue or a part of the inner lining of your uh, cheek. Uh, we may also, if your stage is higher, your tumour is bigger, we may also require to remove uh, parts of your jaw and if the tumour has come out onto the skin, then a part of your skin also may have to be re removed.
Now with that in most cases we also look at removing lymph nodes which are present in your neck and uh, there are different types of neck dissections that most patients who undergo surgery for head and neck cancers will have to undergo. Now both these things are done together at the same time. Now once we have finished doing this surgery then we look at what are the structures which have been removed and we have to now try and replace these structures by uh, some other uh, tissue from the from various parts of your body. Now what happens is uh, if you lose a part of your jaw then we have to try and get a bone from some other part of the body. The commonest place from where we get this bone is from a bone in your leg called the fibula. This bone is harvested and then it can be helped to replace the part of your mandible or your jaw bone that has been removed. Similarly, if we remove the inner lining of the cheek, then we can take either a small skin graft or we can close this primarily or we may need to harvest some areas of skin either from your forearm or from your thigh to replace these tissues that we have removed. Now what you can of course imagine is um, it can never be absolutely the same as the function of the original tissues. Let me give you an example of your tongue. Now if you remove your, uh, if a parts of your tongue are removed because of the cancer that has affected the tongue, um, we may be able to replace it by tissues from some other parts of the body. But unfortunately, it may not function absolutely like your tongue and be mobile. Um, so there may be at the end of your surgery and reconstruction, while we will do our best to try to replace like tissues with like tissues, it may not have the 100% functionality that um, God-given organs would have. So it is important to understand that after this surgery, <clears throat> for some time at least, you will probably have a tube running down your nose through which we will be able to provide you with good quality nutrition. Now, um, you may have many sutures within the mouth and so you will not be able to take anything orally because you need these sutures to heal. It's very important in this post-operative period that you receive excellent nutrition so that um, you get fit faster and your wound heals much better. Uh, to that end, we put in what is called a Riles tube or a nasogastric tube through your nose. This is done during surgery. And as and when you recover and you gain function to start taking by mouth orally, we look at whether we can remove this tube or no. Now, all of these things, removal of tubes, removal of or your functionality, which you will have after surgery, all depends upon the stage of your tumor. If your tumor is smaller, then the resection of normal uh, structures will also be less. But if your tumor is bigger, then we have to remove more and more structures. This has difficulty in reconstruction and therefore your functionality may be compromised. You may also have a tube in your neck, which we call a tracheostomy. Now this tracheostomy tube is helpful for you to breathe because if you have had big surgery in your mouth then uh, your uh, breathing passages may get swollen and this will prevent you from breathing and hence we perform this tracheostomy. It is important to note that uh, the problem with the tracheostomy is while you have the tracheostomy uh, it is difficult for you to speak and uh, you may have to be able to write or communicate in different ways. Now typically uh, for smaller uh, resections uh, you will be in the hospital in the inpatient ward for five to six days uh, but for if your uh, resection has been bigger your stage of cancer has been more advanced we have had to do much more complex surgeries then you may require up to one to two weeks within the hospital after which we will discharge you and then call you back uh, to look at your wounds um, at a regular time point.
we will also in the post operative period refer you to our rehabilitative services uh, these include our speech and language swallowing pathologists we will look at occupational therapists coming and helping you and most importantly physiotherapists coming and guiding you on certain neck shoulder and other exercises to make your recovery uh, much faster so um while all of this sounds uh, a little scary um, and many patients often get very uh, worried about um, uh, pain especially during and after surgery i would like to reassure you all that we take extensive care to see that our patients are as pain free as possible both in the perioperative period and after your surgery most of these surgeries or rather all of these surgeries will be done under complete general anesthesia and you will feel no pain you will have no problem during the surgical procedure post surgery pain is very well managed um, and head and neck cancer patients after surgery don't have very severe pain they do have a little bit of pain which is very well managed with the current analgesics we also have a dedicated pain team so if uh, with regular analgesics your pain is not being controlled our dedicated pain team come on daily rounds and they see to it that our patients are pain free after surgery so uh, just would like to conclude by saying that surgery is the primary modality of treatment uh, especially curative treatment and uh, if you have a stage in which uh, we can offer you any chance of cure most of you will need to undergo some form of surgery depending upon the stage your surgery will involve resection of smaller areas of the head and neck versus bigger areas uh, along with a lymph node dissection reconstruction will be attempted in all patients who require reconstruction and this will be followed by rehabilitation so that you get your functionality back at the earliest best wishes to all of you all